Hey everyone, welcome to this video. If you're new to this channel, I typically just test out new MacBooks when they release. So I have the M3 Pro 18 core, uh, 14 inch, and I'm testing it against the Intel i7 with AMD 55X. This one was originally released in 2016. So in this particular video, I was testing out Blender and then testing out Resolve tests. I have other videos where I do gaming tests on the M3 Pro, and then I also have videos where I test it against Resolve. But that's what this video is going to cover. So let's go right into the Blender results. So as I have been figuring out the testing methodology, QuickTime recording is not done. So this is all done with the iPhone recorded in this uh, kind of B-roll footage. So someone told me that the 4.0 release candidate has better support for ray tracing. So that's what both of these are running. And the uh, ray tracing is turned on on the MacBook Pro M3. While there is, of course, no option to do that on the Intel one on the right, which is a 16 inch again with AMD 55X. So when you first actually try to load Blender or run these things, it has to load the modules, which could take some time. And I think that is included in the render timing. I'll say that by the time the M3 Pro actually starts trying to render the, the image, um, the Intel MacBook actually takes a really long time to get this set up and um, yeah, the M3 Pro is way on its way to getting started doing the render while I believe it takes almost five minutes for the Intel to finally load up all the modules. So it was kind of surprising. And also uh, compared to the M3 Pro, these fan noises started kicking up on the Intel machines. But hey, that could be useful because it's winter time and getting cold. So if you need some heat, maybe consider keeping, keeping this Intel for this winter. Um, so I'll say that if you didn't get a chance to kind of see, because I was talking over it, it was a one minute, 16 seconds. Um, and by the time that the Intel one started actually rendering the screen, I decided to just click the button again on the M3 Pro and it was actually able to run laps around this Intel, which is actually something if you check out the other video um, where I do the RTX 4080 compared to this Intel, this M3 device, sorry. M3 Pro actually with the GPU intensive process still runs laps on this M3 Pro might be on parity with the M3 Max, but that is yet to be determined as I do not have that machine. I want to wrap up by saying that this ran at 45 seconds on the M3 Pro while, as you can see here, it's been six minutes. I wasn't even sure if it was still running. I ended up just quitting it and just saying that the results speak for themselves. The M3 Pro, if you're coming from this Intel Mac, is way faster. Last thing I want to call out about this result is that someone said that the 4.0 would somehow magically better utilize this. Um, and so at least in this release candidate, it does not. I showed in the previous video that I get about 45 seconds as well running the blender on the public version that is available while this release candidate does not actually um, kind of make it super faster. Even though it doesn't say it's a beta anymore, it still runs at about 45 seconds. So keep that in mind. There may be improvements as there's an alpha version that was that I could have downloaded it, but I decided to stick with release candidate. So I wanted to just talk through what you're about to see in these next videos, which is DaVinci Resolve. So the timeline is set up so that the first test runs a planar tracker, which is done in Resolve, and you just kind of add it to the setting you see here in Fusion, and then you could create a box and it will do a planar tracking. The next method is object tracking, where you simply add object tracking and then you could decide what you want to track. So I tried to match these per laptop. Um, of course, the scientific method would have been to export the project and use the same project files. But this is not a science experiment, or at least I used to do that stuff, but I don't do that too much anymore. And you can see the grayscale thing on the right is trying to track my face. Um, so that is how object tracking works. Last is magic mask. So on this timeline, when you go to the colors panel and you select the magic mask, it's actually kind of what the whole tool is called. You could go to person tracking. It's based off the stroke, which is kind of like using uh, MLAI to decide what is the differentiation. And what happens here is actually when you select, you need to wait for it to kind of first detect the first scene. Um, I think I've heard this called rotoscoping as well, but anyways, as you can see here, it detects me in the red and then you would track for the length of your clip. So now that I've explained it, turn QuickTime off on the M3 Pro, which is what the QuickTime was recorded on. You hit the track button and you could see visually between both screens that the M3 Pro is actually playing almost tracking in real time, 60 frames per second and has finished the 10 second clip 
while the Intel MacBook has not finished it yet. So we can see here frames rendered 600, around 70 frames per second, while the Intel Mac is only doing 18 frames per second. So yeah, pretty good improvement, at least in this workflow. If this is something you do, you will get a significant improvement if you're still sticking to the M3 MacBooks. Last thing I'll say is that the playback is actually seems kind of better. So um, if this is something you're also considering when playing back uh, with tracking, or obviously you would when you're doing this workflow, um, yeah, pretty good improvement in playback as well. Let's take a look at object tracking. So once you click the tracking on object tracking, I then become a floating head. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> um, but yeah, it actually tracks pretty much the same. So maybe this resolve uh, fusion functionality uses CPUs or I'm not exactly sure because the CPU performance should be better, but it's actually tracking 12 frames per second versus 11 frames per second. So I would say, you know, if you're depending on what your workflow is, um, you could accomplish, in my opinion, the same thing with planar tracking. And I've seen most of this use for like, you know, tracking your laptop, adding text over it or stuff of that nature. So um, if you're on an Intel, you use planar tracking, but if for some reason this is needed from a point tracking perspective on your workflow, you won't get an improvement actually going to the M3 Pro. I mean, obviously we see here it finished faster, but negligible in my opinion, 12 frames per second versus 11. It's going to be maybe like five seconds faster. So just something to consider. So ignoring my huge head getting in the way, um, what I tried to explain in the explainer is that once you make a stroke, the video or the resolve has to kind of run its algorithms to detect um, your your body or the person actually was what the tool's called with the magic mask. So what I'm showcasing here and why I'm including this is that um, maybe it's cached in resolve, but I made the stroke on both and you can see that it just automatic, or I'm not gonna say automatically, but pretty quickly found my, um, the difference and obviously I showed in the beginning when I was recording on QuickTime, it took a long time. That could be due to the QuickTime using GPU. Um, and now as you're seeing it from the iPhone, um, QuickTime's turned off um, or it could be because it cached it somehow. Um, but anyways, that is just something to consider if for folks trying to determine using this workflow. I think this probably might be a really uh, used workflow out in the industry. I mean, even as an amateur YouTuber, this seems pretty good to like remove backgrounds from videos kind of better than let's say a TikTok or it's if you use TikTok or Instagram to do it. Um, so yeah, this one records or not records the frames rates are pretty good. There's no indicator, as I mentioned in previous videos, when I compared it to the RTX 4080, um, but you can see here it's finishing way faster than the Intel. Um, but of course, if you check out the RTX video, which uses a Windows laptop, the 4080M laptop version does this like almost instantaneously compared to this M3 Pro. Last up, I just want to say that actually in playing back the Magic, it, you get 15 frames per second on M3 Pro while it's two frames per second. Um, I actually paused it. Just you could see the blue bar didn't even let it finish two frames per second on the Intel. So the last thing I want to talk about was I actually saw Max Tech run this and never really thought about it. Um, but this is Chrome Windows that I actually plan to test out. And I thought about loading these tabs. Or I did load them actually last night. And now I just pulled up Chrome. And I'm, I guess what I'm showcasing here is that with the M3 Pro, when you click through tabs, um, I guess it doesn't get as cached efficiently uh, compared to the Intel because I basically closed the lid on both these devices, went to sleep for eight hours. So coming back, we're seeing here like Lucid Charts has to reload the page completely. Um, I'm not exactly sure, you know, how Mac decides closing, freeing up space because I ran, obviously, this is after Resolve and, and Blender tests, um, like the same stuff. Maybe because Steam's open or some other stuff is open and had to clear some room or some clash or cash. Um, but, you know, for the most part, you know, I ran, you saw me run, ran Resolve and I ran Blender. So um, 
obviously, you know, some people might multitask while their tools are rendering. I just kind of wanted to showcase, like, um, you know, it has to refresh the tabs here. We're browsing through Reddit. Um, you can see, you know, the 120 hertz. This is another consideration if you're coming from Intel. It just scrolls smoother. Um, less, you know, visual choppiness when loading. Here, our friends giving food uh, sign-up list pretty much runs the same, in my opinion. Um, the Lucid charts loads the same, in my opinion. I actually thought that the Intel one loaded faster. I mean, you can kind of visually see. So in the test that I run it again, um, it, I would say pretty much the same, at least on this page. So when you actually need to load the Lucid, hitting refresh here, you will get some better load times, probably some responsiveness. Depending on what you have on Lucid Charts or Miro, um, you'll definitely have like a better dragging experience, I'll say. Uh, maybe making pro process charts or whatnot. But loading the individual tabs on this template, which you could get if you have Lucid, um, it's one of the publicly available templates, loads pretty fine, or, or I would say standardly, <laughs> if that's even a word. Um, Canva, this is how I make my YouTube thumbnails. This page loaded pretty much the same speed. And the last thing I check out is actually opening an actual file or at least refreshing it. So like I mentioned, I made a RTX 4080. This was the th YouTube thumbnail. They load pretty much similar, uh, similarly or at the same time. There, there has to be a word for similarly. Someone in the comment, let me know what it is. Um, then here I test actually like clicking it from the load. And when we do that, you know, a little bit faster on the MV Pro. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, comment, and subscribe if you want to. If you want to help me get five cents. If you watch this video and you like, comment, and subscribe, I'll get five cents from this video. And that will help a Filipino boy which is me in America. Thanks. Later.